Hello everyone and welcome back to the Artist Consulting YouTube channel. I'm Jared Farber. Today I'm going to take you through another demo, this one with a relatively new feature called Data Marts. So let's talk a little bit about what Data Marts is and why it's best used. Data Marts really bridges the gap between IT and business users. A lot of times when business users need new data sources, they go to IT and sometimes it can take months to get these sources created. So that's where they kind of create their own sources, but that can also lead to situations where there's not as much governance as you'd want. Data Marts really bridges that, that gap, that situation, so that they can kind of have the best of both worlds. It, Data Marts provides a simple and potentially optionally no code experience to really ingest your data. Um, do anything from ETL to using Power Query to using the designer to creating measures, role level security, really everything that you'd want to be able to do. Uh, and it also requires no tuning or optimization. So it really provides you an end-to-end -end experience um, and potentially without any kind of code being involved. It's 100% web-based, so no other software is required. Um, and it allows you to really uh, do your performance tuning uh, automatically. Also has native integration with you know, Power BI, other Microsoft products, um, and is, uh, has the ability to be used in any kind of premium capacities. So that would be premium per user or just regular Power BI premium. So let's walk through exactly how to create a data mart, you know, what it looks like and how to set up refreshes. So here we are in our uh, test client. We've got a workspace called, called Artist Dev. And let's go ahead and hit the new button right here. We'll see a new option under uh, data mart preview right here. And one thing to mention, Right now, as of July 15th, this is still in preview. So in your tenant settings, if you don't have this uh, create data marts section enabled, you won't actually see this yet. So make sure that's turned on if you want to use data marts. OK, so let's go ahead and click on data marts. Give it just a second. It usually takes about 10 or 15 seconds for a data mart to be created. OK. So it's going to come to the screen in your first section, you know, very similar to how you start off a Power BI uh, report itself is get, uh, get data, where you want to actually get your data from. So on the top left, let's go ahead and hit get data, and we're going to choose our source. For this one, let's use a AdventureWorks uh, source. So let me pull that up. Okay, and let's hit next. Okay, so now what's happened is on the left-hand side, you can see all of our potential options for tables. Um, you know, very similar to how we would, you know, regular Power BI data set. Um, you, just, you click and choose which uh, tables you want to include. So let's do a couple of them. Let's do dim account and one, let's do one dimension and one fact table. Dim account and fact internet sales. And let's hit transform data. Let's just say I'm good with these two steps and this, you know, this Power Query screen where you can do your regular Power Query steps. Let's say I'm good to go. Let's go ahead and hit save. It's going to come up with a few different options. You know, it's telling you your Power Query is processing, your ETL, your relationships, etc. And then it's loading the data itself. So let's hit go to workspace, and you can see our data made, our data mart has been created. And let's give it a new name. Let's call this test data mart. Okay, perfect. So now we've got our data mart created. And let's show uh, the different things that you can do within this data mart. So let's click on test data mart two. And across the top, you can see several different options. You've got, you know, if you wanted to get more data, transform data, enter data, all kinds of different things we can do here. So let's first start off with a, a measure. So you can actually create measures in data marts themselves. If I right click and hit new measure, measure will be created. Let's just call this sum of sales. Sum of, call this uh, total product cost, something like that. So you can actually create measures themselves within the table. So pretty cool, pretty cool situation there. A um, few other things you can do, you can actually create relationships themselves, and that's what one of, one of these icons here on the bottom is, and we'll go through those in just a second. 
but the bottom right hand side is the model itself. So if we wanted to create any kind of relationship, you know, very similar to what we do in a Power BI report, this is where we would do it. So if you had a, you know, some kind of key that you wanted to include, um, this is where you would actually connect them. So if I had like count key to, you know, just pretend there's another account key there, this is where I could actually create the relationship. A um, few other things you can do, you can set up an incremental refresh, go back to the table itself. And if we right click in incremental refresh, it actually works a lot faster than it would in, Power, in a Power BI desktop report. So let's click on the use incremental refresh on the data tab on the table. You're going to select your time field that you want it to be based off of, your storage periods, let's just say two years, your refresh period, let's say one day. And then, you know, if you want to refresh any kind of changed data. Um, and then you, if you save it, you've got your incremental refresh set up. So I'm going to actually close that out for now. That's how you set up an incremental refresh. And one other thing to mention here on Power BI service is that it actually works well with uh, deployment pipelines, which is where you can see that create a pipeline section right up here. Okay, a few other things to call out here. I'm just going to hit cancel for now. A couple other uh, options here on the bottom. So we've got the designer, and then we've got the SQL designer. So designer is really how you build queries without any kind of code. So I've clicked and I uh, clicked and pulled that table in here, and this is a node-based section. So you've got your source, your table. Let's add a new step, and let's just say choose columns. Choose just the account key. You can see a new step has been created. You know, very similar to how we would do in Power Query, but instead this is no, completely node-based, requiring no code. The third logo down here is the SQL Designer. And if you wanted to do any kind of SQL uh, querying, this is where you could do it as well. So let's just say I want to do select star from dim account. This is where I would do that. A few other options that you can do here. Um, let's go back to the data section. You can actually implement role level security here as well. So up to manage roles. If I wanted to create a specific role under dim account, you know, for account coding equaling one or something like that. Um, and this is my, this is the role that I've created. So you can actually create that there right here in the data mart. Um, one last feature to point out here, which is the actual end goal, which is the reports themselves. To create a report off of a data mart, just gonna go ahead and uh, hit the three dots here in Power BI service and hit create report. And you can see I've got my two tables right here and I can pull things in and create different visuals based off of my data mart. So pretty cool new feature. I um, think it'll be really useful in the future if you want more information specifically about the refresh section, please refer to uh, two of our videos that we've done in the past. We've got an incremental refresh video, which uh, sets, shows you how to set up an incremental refresh. Um, and then we've also got a recent video on data refreshes, depending on the storage type. So thank you everyone for listening and stay tuned for our next video.